It is Thursday, the 23rd of March, and this is Love Notes, daily devotions from Holy Trinity Lutheran Church. Grace and peace to you. We turn now to the 24th chapter of Matthew. Jesus has left the temple grounds for the day. The battles are behind him for today. As he comes out of the temple, it says, and was going away, his disciples came to point out to him the buildings of the temple. They are probably quite awestruck. The temple's been under construction for 46 years. King Herod began the construction, and it's continued after, and it is a pretty glorious thing. It maybe doesn't measure up to Solomon's temple, but it's still pretty amazing. As the disciples point and are in awe at its size, at its scope, at its purpose, Jesus asks them, You see all these, do you not? The stones that are set one upon another, huge stones, immovable. Truly, I tell you, Jesus says, not one stone will be left here upon another. All will be thrown down. Now, if you're reading this as one of the community that Matthew is writing to, you know in your mind already that this has come to pass. In 70 AD, the Romans finished the destruction of Jerusalem as a city. They tore down the temple. They burned it. They knocked it over. They took all of the treasure inside, and Jerusalem was no more. The things that Jesus had been talking about have started to come to pass. And Matthew wants to use the teaching of Jesus to make sure they understand that Jesus has something to say in the face of this awful tragedy. Sometimes when we hear these apocalyptic kinds of things, apocalyptic is a kind of literature that points to the future and prophesies about what will happen, we forget that it was written to the people of that age, not to us. It's not fortune telling. Often, as is this case, it's explaining something that's already happened. Jesus says the temple will be torn down, and it was. When they've crossed over the Valley of Kidron and are now in the Mount of Olives, as he sits there, the disciples came to him privately saying, tell us when will this be? And what will be the sign of your coming and the end of the age? They believe that He's talking about the temple being destroyed as the sign that he will be there, that he will be the cause of it. Jesus answered them, Beware that no one leads you astray. We should always remember this whole coming up section because many people claim that they know the answers. For many will come in my name, Jesus says, saying, I am the Messiah, and they will lead many astray. And you will hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that you are not alarmed, for this must take place. But the end is not yet. See, when the wars come and there's rumors of wars, that doesn't mean that the end is here. Jerusalem knocked down is but the growing pains of the kingdom of God. And here, 2,000 years later, there are still wars and rumors of wars. We're a year into the war in Ukraine. We don't know what's going to happen yet. And there are all kinds of other hot spots and conflicts all over the world. He says, nation will rise against nation. Yep, check. Kingdom against kingdom, check. There will be famines and earthquakes, Turkey and Syria. All this is but the beginning of the birth pangs. See, what these things tell us is that the kingdom is not yet. You have to kind of flip the negative and see that what Jesus is saying is that in the kingdom of God, peace will be established and the horror and suffering of tragedies like earthquakes and famines will be over. If they're still happening, the kingdom of God has not yet dawned. It doesn't mean that when we read the newspaper and we see war breaking out that we should be looking around for Jesus to show up. No, what we should be doing is once again reminding us that we are in for the long haul 
that Jesus is with us in the midst of the warfare, in the midst of the suffering, in the midst of the famine, in the midst of the epidemic and the pandemic. Jesus goes on to say, and then they will hand you over to be tortured and to be put to death. That's already happening when people receive Matthew's gospel. You'll be hated, and that happens. Then many will fall away because it's too hard to believe. That happens every day, and more and more so in our society, where with each successive generation, fewer and fewer people are part of the church and part of the community that worships Christ. There will be an increase in lawlessness, he says, and the love of many will grow cold. That's maybe, to me, one of the most chilling things, if you'll pardon the pun, that Jesus says, the love of many will grow cold. Does that not describe the age we live in today? Love has grown cold. I think of the things that legislatures are considering, that governments are doing, and I think love has grown cold in our world. But then he calls them to endure. Those who endure to the end will be saved. The good news of the kingdom shall be proclaimed throughout the world. There are still places it must go. There's a sense in which this whole text tells us that we should not be looking back. We should not be trying to anticipate the future as to when on the calendar we can put down Jesus will be back a week from next Thursday. Instead, we should be looking ahead for the coming of Christ and the end to all the injustice, oppression, warfare, famine, disease, and peril, an end to death itself even. And that will give us the hope to live day to day. That will give us life. If you remember the story of Lot and Sodom and Gomorrah, you'll remember that Lot's wife couldn't keep herself from looking back, and she was turned into a pillar of salt. Don't look back. Don't try to anticipate more than you can know, but instead live in the promise and hope of Christ. Let us pray. Lord, we look around and we see all kinds of signs that you aren't back yet. Peace does not reign, justice does not reign, People still die, pandemics rage, earthquakes leave victims by the score. These are signs, Lord, that your reign has not yet come and we should hope for it every day. That we should pray like the early church Maranatha, which means come quickly. We ask, Lord, that you would guide us and give us the strength to endure. In Jesus' holy name, amen.